Good morning, USA. Welcome to another episode of the Burning Your Bus Show. I'm all out of coffee. I'm all out of trail mix. I drank the coffee, so I'm not totally, totally without. I don't know how I would even try to do this without a, a little bit of coffee, but here we go. Jimmy Dore, to start with his fabulous words about the role of journalists, particularly corporate sponsored journalists, in, um, well, his, his big point is war. He says if any pro, any anti-war journalist tries to get that kind of a message out on one of the major networks, they will lose their job pronto. But it's it's not just war. It's a it's a bigger problem. It's well. Let me let me start instead of with Jimmy. Let me start with this quote. It's from Common Dreams. The article is the big tent is really no tent. Why the Democrats old guard has to get out of the way. And the quote that I want is Democrats in particular have been loath to abandon the centrist strategy that has enabled them to fill their campaign coffers with corporate money, and the party has shrunk in size and influence as a result. And the, and the journalists are a big part of that problem. They have enabled the Democrats, the corporate, corrupt, neoliberal, third way, in bed with big money, in bed with Wall Street Democrats, to actually shrink in influence because they're not talking to real people anymore. So here is Jimmy. This week, Syrian refugees in Jordan, they requested that the first international criminal court case against the Syrian government commence. You met Bashar al-Assad Assad in 2017. Do you believe that Assad is a war criminal? I think that what is the point of these questions? <laughs> what is the point? I, I, don't gotcha. you still don't want to bomb him? You still don't want to kill some people in another country because you know how well it works out. All it, that's what she keeps saying. So let me find another way to get you to. You still don't want, but he's a war. You know who else is a war criminal? Dana George Bush. You know who else is a war criminal? Dick Cheney. You know who else? Condoleezza Rice. Don Rumsfeld. There's lots of war criminals right here in the good old U.S. of A. Do you know that our drone program is the biggest terrorist program in the world? Kills mostly innocent civilians? Do you know that Barack Obama would be considered a war criminal? Do you know that every president since World War II of the United States, every president would be considered a war criminal? Did you know that? Of course she doesn't know that. That's why she has the job. <laughs> but you know who does know that? Me in my fucking garage. The evidence needs to be gathered. And as I have said before, if there is evidence that he has committed war crimes, he should be prosecuted as such. But you're not sure now. Everything that I have said requires that we take action based on evidence. The evidence is there. There should be accountability. Okay, there you go. That that's literally that's that she sounds like a politician. Do can't we go to war? Can't we bomb someone? Can't we just keep doing the wrong thing over and over and over? Why? Because she is bought and funded by the people she's supposed to be investigating and exposing. That is the point. So now we we come to Mimi Roca. Mimi was on a, let me go back here. Mimi is a criminal justice fellow at Pace Law School. She was featured on MSNBC in a panel discussion. The topic was 2020 U.S. presidential contenders, and she was asked to help make a distinction between Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. We've talked about this before. I'll just quickly summarize Wall Street um, finds Bernie absolutely unacceptable. And they've always said that about Elizabeth, too. But now what they're saying is, let's see if we can get Bernie Sanders supporters to go for Elizabeth. We know they won't go for Joe Biden. We know they won't go for Kamala. They won't go for 
uh, a known corporate sock puppet. But Elizabeth is a stealth corporate sock puppet. Elizabeth is acceptable. My, my proof is she's acceptable. Our, our, well, that, that's his word. John Cowan of Third Way, president of Third Way, said that she has become acceptable. And that's why she's, she's not a real progressive. She's a, a capitalist in sheep's clothing. So what we've got here is this effort by Third Way to make Elizabeth acceptable to Bernie voters because they know absolutely they can't have Bernie. Third Way absolutely, they consider him an existential threat to, the, to their way of life. So they bring in Mimi Roca, and MSNBC also regularly has um, Maxwell, what's her name? Serlina, that's it, I just remembered. And, and she's, she's continue, continually bashing Bernie the problem with the way she does it, though, she tries to bring in in factual reasons to bash Bernie, and then it's easy to to dispute her reasons. But so they bring in Mimi Roca, who doesn't say anything factual. She says, for me, and again, I'm not the political analyst here, but just as a woman, probably considered a somewhat moderate Democrat, I, Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. I can't even identify for you exactly what it is, but I see him as sort of a, a not pro-woman candidate. And so having the two of them there, I don't understand young women who support him, and I'm hoping that having him next to her will help highlight that, because those are the people that if I were here, I would want to say, why are you supporting him and not me if you're going to choose between the two of us? And this is brilliant, really, because there's no substance to it. There's no reason behind it. It's just a smear, a, a factless smear. And and Selena's back is next to her, nodding her head. <laughs> I think I have a picture of that. Yeah, there's Selena. There's uh, Mimi. And zero facts. Look, first of all, I think what the first debate showed us is that they do make a Look at the nodding head. Yeah, yeah, this is what I want you to say. Difference, right? I mean yeah, I've got a good got a good um picture of it. These are my words. I put my words in Mimi's mouth. Or well, this this little bubble she did herself. I'm not sure why I think Bernie is anti-woman. I'm not the political analyst here. Perhaps I identify with Warren because she's also a hard-working, elitist white woman who says the right things to make people like her. Fuck it, let's be real. Bernie wants to allow everyone access to my lifestyle, and I don't like it. And there you have the essence of, of the snarling Democrat. Nico House thinks she's just a plant. She, she's a, a robot designed to crush Bernie without evidence. And that's not a bad guess. But I think Mimi is a real snarling Democrat. I think she really feels that her privilege is being threatened the same way John Cowan of Third Way feels that his privilege is being threatened. I think they both consider Bernie to be an existential threat. For real. I don't think she just was saying what she was paid to say. I found her on Twitter if you'd like to to talk to her about anything. Mimi Roca at Mimi Roca One. She really believes that Bernie is a threat. In a previous Medium article, I described the kind of vitriol that seems to come with the territory occupied by many elitist Democrats. Their, elite, their elitism is why they hate Bernie. That's the reason they keep reminding us that he is not actually a Democrat. Many of them absolutely loathe his populism. Their class-based sense of entitlement runs very deep. In that same article, I went on to explain why they might support an overt co corporatist like Joe Biden or a stealth corporatist such as Elizabeth Warren. 
They falsely believe that such a candidate will best protect, protect their privilege. That's why they mirror the third way sentiment that anyone but Bernie should win the Democratic nomination. Until you see her face and you see her shaking her fists and being really angry at Bernie, I think it can surprise us when we are confronted with how territorial, grasping, and downright bigoted elitist Democrats can be. Roca is a bona fide member of the crony club that keeps electing neoliberal politicians. Her snarl is the real thing. She may be willing to say the right things on social issues, but when it comes down to it, she still thinks of the world as a zero-sum place and seems all too willing to fight people like Bernie Sanders, who might actually make a dent in the power structure of the world we all inhabit. What she and other snarling Democrats don't seem to understand is that there is plenty for everyone. The world has not been zero-sum since the first Industrial Revolution. We do not need to keep acting as though our personal goals can only be met if many other people conveniently sorted into the category of other by our masters are denied access to their goals. It's a kind of selfishness that's ugly and it, it looks really ugly when you realize that the reason people want more isn't really to have more. It's, it's so that they can pretend that they're better than the people who have less. And once such people get a leg up and get a system going, like third-way neoliberalism, they don't want to let go of it. Not because they're going to have less material wealth. What they'll have is less status, because if everyone can have what we have, it won't feel so good. I don't care if I have a lot. I just want to have more than most other people. And that's the sneering, snarling, elitist Democrat in a nutshell. And that's what we're fighting when Bernie comes onto the scene. And Bernie won't be here forever. What we need to realize with our movement is that it, it's bigger than Bernie Sanders. It's big, bigger than all of us. But those of us who want to stand up to the corporate system that's in place will need to keep his spirit going indefinitely. And there will always be a challenge. There will always be uh, a corporate element that wants to come back. And we have to treat that corporate element like a weed once we pull it out. Right now, though, it's squeezing our garden. It's squeezing us clear out of our garden. And we need to work hard with Bernie and with anyone who comes along after Bernie to make sure that that, that way of thinking, that a uh, neoliberal way of thinking doesn't continue to rule us. So that was somewhat scripted because I was reading from my article. If you'd like to go back to that article, I'll put the link in the information section below this video. Please, please go back and uh, there's a place at the end you can clap for it. And I hope you will. Still unshaved, unbathed, and unedited, obviously, and I hope I hope you do the same and find yourself some coffee and, and enjoy what's left of the day.